So one of the first things you need to understand about influx is we have something called a cavity pressure response. And what we're doing here is as the flow front is reaching the end of fill, we often find it advantageous to make an adjustment. Um, so as cavity pressure builds, we may make an adjustment downward in pressure. That would be a very classic adjustment we would make in a, in a process. And, and very importantly, we don't need a cavity pressure sensor in the mold. And the reason for that is, is you know, our, our system is, is seeing the, the mold and seeing the flow of the material into the mold as resistance. Because I'm seeing that resistance in real time, I can understand my flow front progression and I can understand uh, what the loads are, what the pressures are that flow front is experiencing as it's filling the mold. And so I can create what I call a virtual cavity pressure sensor uh, rather than requiring a cavity pressure sensor in the mold. And so that allows me to make these adjustments with real time understanding of what's happening at that flow front without the need for that cavity pressure sensor in the, in the mold. And so this response, it, I can have a downward response where I'm backing off on pressure as I'm reaching the end of fill. I can also increase that pressure as well. Why would I want to increase that pressure? Uh, there are times in thicker parts uh, with certain types of geometry where you need that extra packing pressure. You know, you need to give it that little bit extra as you're filling. There are other situations where maybe it's a very dimensionally sensitive part where again, adding that additional uh, pressure right at the end of fill actually helps to, uh, to, to set those dimensions and provide very tight uh, standard deviations. So both of these scenarios can be advantageous for different part types in different situations, um, but this is, a, this is a lever in our process that's very important to our process engineers. So also this cavity pressure sensor, it allows us to make a compensation for things that are changing. So, you know, as viscosity changes in this case, if viscosity were to become lower, if I'm pushing with the same pressure, I'm gonna to get to that, that virtual cavity pressure sensor sooner, I'm gonna to react to it a little sooner. If my viscosity goes up, I'm gonna get there a little later, I'm gonna to react to it a little later. So it gives me a way to compensate for the things that are changing, either in the material, the temperatures, um, other factors in the molding of that part. Um, and as you may have seen in, in other uh, videos or other tutorials about the technology, this actually works in tandem with what we call our AVA technology. And the two things together are very powerful in terms of their ability to compensate for, uh, for viscosity changes, temperature changes, even down cavities and other uh, things that you may experience in molding uh, a part. And so um, lastly, this, this is a, um, it's a, it's a versatile process. Um, we don't ramp up at one rate and it's always that rate. We have the flexibility to ramp very quickly or ramp more slowly. And so why would I wanna do that? Well, in some cases, like for a very thin part, I might be interested in shearing that material and cutting that viscosity to help that material flow better into that really thin part. Or maybe it's a really small uh, geometry in the part that I need that little bit of extra um, shearing. Um, I also may wanna go uh, much slower at times. I may have a gate blush issue or I may have a shear sensitive material. And so the key thing to remember is this is completely adjustable um, and even more adjustable than what's shown here. You can inject extremely slowly if, if your part demands that. The other thing is that we, we don't have to be at a constant level pressure set point. Um, now, most of the processes we set up are exactly as described, a constant pressure profile. But there are certain part geometries um, that can lend themselves to, you know, maybe I want a slightly increasing pressure as I'm filling that part, just based on the geometry that I'm flowing through. Maybe I want a slightly decreasing ramp. Um, and so all of these things can be put together to meet the needs of your part. And for some really challenging applications, these are the kind of things our engineers, kind of tools our engineers are employing uh, to address some of those needs of, of some of those really tough parts. The other thing that's really important is that our process is always tuned. It's tuned to the mold, the material, uh, and the machine 
that we're running in. And the, you know, if, if, you're, if you're not tuning uh, to meet the needs of those machines, you wind up with, with issues. You wind up with issues like overshoot. If I'm tuned too aggressively, I'm gonna overshoot my set point. I'm gonna not be able to react fast enough as I come back down to set points, I'm gonna undershoot. And in really extreme cases, I may oscillate through the entire filling of this mold. That's bad, okay? This is a hesitation, you're done, right? So um, can't, you cannot do this. This would be a bad thing. Um, similarly, kind of in the opposite uh, direction, you can have very sluggish tuning. And you know, sluggish tuning is bad because you know I may not even be able to reach my pressure set point. I may not get there at all. Or I might get, not get there till very late in the cycle. Also bad. Um, you know, for me to get the benefits of packing as I'm filling and and not hesitating, I need to be able to get to the set point and then maintain that set point with the appropriate driving pressure at all times to create that no hesitation uh, flow conditions uh, in my tool. And so. This is a feature that is in our software that, uh, that's, that's absolutely essential and is set up on every single process that we, that we do. Influx, advanced technology, made simple.